So, have you ever agreed to something and then wondered whether it was the smartest decision you'd ever made? <laughs> well, that happened to me last spring when a group of middle school students decided they wanted to reimagine their cafeteria dining experience. Well, when I learned that they were going to be working with Alex Gilliam, architect with Public Workshop, I thought, this is going to be a fantastic learning experience. Really, really fantastic. <laughs> I imagined the kids were going to be uh, building booths in their maker space, maybe bringing a few plants into the cafeteria, putting some new posters on the wall. Then, I started to see these images popping up <laughs> on Instagram and Twitter. And I thought, I better find out what I've agreed to. <laughs> so I called up a colleague who was very closely working with this project, and when he answered his cell phone, I could barely hear him because of the buzz of power tools in the background. And I said, what's going on? His response, well, Pam, the kids have decided they don't want to really build booths. What they want to build is a tree house. <laughs> then he said, not just one tree house, two tree houses, rolling tree houses, no less. <laughs> now, I'm a real believer in building a culture of contagious creativity. That's not always easy, and this was one of those times. So go here with me. I know that getting to yes can be really difficult, and some of you in the audience are probably thinking, Pam, you can agree to building tree houses in your cafeteria, but I'm not sure I can get there. And I've learned over the years that the challenge of getting past yeah, but, to what if can be pretty difficult. This was one of those times. I thought to myself, I need to figure out what's going on down there. So here's what I did. I got in my car, and I drove down to the school, and I walked down to the cafeteria. And there I found the kids climbing all over these structures with Alex's watchful eye on them but they're using drills and hammers and saws and they're using them like pros. Sheer joy on their faces. And the principal walked over to me and she said, you know, Pam, when I look up there, I see kids who sometimes are not very successful in school, but they are having incredible success working on this project. Then a teacher walked over and said, these kids, are doing math at higher levels with more complexity than I could have ever imagined that they would accomplish in their math class. And I knew in that moment that this project was defining my capability to get to yes. So, I work in a district that's learning how to get to yes. And in doing so, we're finding that whether it's teachers or students or even principals, that things are changing. I turned on the television last summer and up pops a story. And if you're a superintendent, you know you're always following your stories in the news. And there's a group of girls, high school and middle school girls, who are lugging construction tools and lumber down in the woods. And as I watched it, I thought, I need to know more about this. So I went and looked for the project leader, Iowati, who's on the screen behind me, and I said, can you tell me about what you were doing there? And here's what she shared, that in the spring before that, she had been thinking about the fact that middle school girls really don't know much about engineering, and she felt that was a challenge, and she had an idea to change it. So she went to a mentor teacher, described it to him, and he said, why not? Her solution? to create a bridge building camp in the summer, to bring in some of her friends, go out and find middle school girls who would participate, and the next thing you know, they've designed a bridge, they're lugging the construction tools and the lumber down into the woods and building a bridge across a creek 
along a walking trail that serves our community. And I realized in that moment that the idea of getting to yes, the power of yes, had moved out into our schools and far beyond the doors of my office. So, creativity abounds in our district. And one of the things that I know is that we have learned that getting to yes is the first step in the change process of really reimagining every nook and cranny of what we call 20th century factory school. So, I may walk into a Learning Commons makerspace and find Julian here working on one of his drones or maybe finding him flying them in the gym. Or I may go out and wander into an old library storage room that's been turned into a music construction studio, and there's Grace recording and performing her original rap music along with her teacher, Chance. And I know that because of our educators getting to yes and making it safe to try out new ideas, our schools are now different. We've built makerspaces and hackerspaces. We've taken down walls and removed lockers and made design studios. And what I see all over our schools today are kids who no longer are having to check creativity when they enter our schoolhouse doors. So let's get back to the <laughs> treehouse. Today when I go visit the treehouse school, as it's become fondly known as, <laughs> and I go down to the cafeteria, I may see kids up high and they're reading or writing or working on projects and at lunchtime, maybe they're eating with friends and listening to music. And the idea of this project has moved far beyond the walls of the cafeteria. Right now, the kids are making beautiful benches that they're putting in outdoor spaces around the school. And I'm not real certain what project these kids are going to come up with next to improve their school, but this is something I do know. They will have no problem bringing their ideas forward to the adults that they work with in their school. So, don't just take this from me. I'd like to share with you the last conversation I had with Ayawadi. And this is what she said. She said, you know, Dr. Moran, here's what I've learned. When I have a new idea or a project that I want to do, my first instinct is to say, let's just get to it and see what happens. And here's what I've learned. There's no secret sauce and there's no recipe for getting to yes, and it's oftentimes not easy. So I'd like to invite you to do something with me right now, and that is to pause and take a deep breath and to consider this. Sometime soon, somebody's gonna come to your office and they're going to pitch to you their idea for their version of a tree house. Be ready and just say yes. Thank you.